Happy Wednesday, everybody, and also happy July. Can you believe it? July 1st, Courtney. Unbelievable. I don't know where the time has gone because we're, we're not doing anything. We're just staying at home, right? Yeah, the fastest, slowest year ever. Fastest, slowest year ever. I know. Can you believe July 1st and the holiday, obviously, is just a few days away, July 4th, our Independence Day, and normally we take a summer trip and all of that. Not happening. Not happening. Yeah, it's like 2020 is canceled. I remember being a kid and thinking, oh my gosh, 2020, we're going to have flying cars and everything's <laughs> right. going to be so great. And even if we don't have flying cars, it's going to be the coolest year ever, the start of a new like year and decade. 2020, nobody really saw it coming, did they? Uh-uh, sure did not. And usually for 4th of July, we're at the beach or we'll go somewhere um, Take kind of just like a weekend. It's always weird that one year, it gets ha Fourth of July was like on a Tuesday, and it was really strange in the middle of the week, right? But at least it's on the weekend. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's sort of you know, I love this conversation that so many of us have. What are you, what are you doing for the weekend, or what are you doing for Fourth of July? Uh, well, some um, laundry. Right here. Might wash the windows. <laughs> I know. I know. We've been doing stuff around the house because that's really all we do these days. And instead of drinking wine in the evenings, we started drinking like soda water. We You're not the, drinking wine anymore? No, we're not. When we're, did this happen? The giant bottles of Topo Chico. Just Actually, last night. Just today, this is happening? <laughs> yeah. It's a new Something thing. Something new. We've been doing it for 12. two hours. <laughs> No, the Topo Chico, because it's extra bubbly. I'm thinking of I getting one I of love those, the Topo. like, arky uh, water bubble thingies where you make your own carbonated water Just at home. Just buy the Topo Chico. Really? It's not going to taste as, as good as you think it is. How do you know? I've had it. It falls flat, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like my jokes. <laughs> but, you know, the Topo, there's a different type of bubbling effervescence, I guess, is probably the word I'm looking for, um, because it's stronger than just, say, like, a sparkling water. It's different. Well, yeah, isn't it just extra carbonated? I guess. So if you made your own at home, couldn't you just, like, do two pumps of the, ex of the you know, the CO2 canister? Don't bother. Just buy the Topo Chico. <laughs> really. I mean, what are they, a dollar, right? Yeah, but we're not trying to go, like, we're trying not to go anywhere these days. Well, no, we're trying to stay home. Curbside, pick that up at your grocery store. That's true. Maybe we'll do that. Add that to cart. The point Add is, cart. we stay home, we vacuum, we clean the windows, we water the plants, and we drink sparkling water now. It's our new thing. I love it. I have one, I think, every night with dinner. Do you really? Yeah. Because I, I, I've completely gotten off soda. I would have a Diet Coke here and there um, just to, to have a soda. But I told you I stopped drinking Diet Coke during Lent one year. This is probably 10 years ago or longer. And, um, and so I completely got off the soda train. But I think, you know, I just drink water. So, ha and wine. <laughs> <laughs> but having the Topo, like, extra cold, I don't know. Am I... What? <laughs> I mean, the whole point for us is we're trying to just be a little healthier, right? I mean, after all of this time at home, we do our at-home workouts. Like this morning, I did 100 push-ups. It felt so good, good. to kind of moving. But when it's sticky outside, I don't really feel like running. And so... Why? Get out and run. I don't know. Come on. It just gets very sticky. It can be complicated. Well, you live in a sticky climate. You have to get outside. Just do it. Embrace it. Get the glazed donut look, as so many of them say. Oh, that's a great way to look at yeah. it. It's funny, though, during during the times of COVID, I swear, one day, we're all going to look back on this time and we're going to say, wow, 2020, that really was quite a year, right? And things that people are doing now that we never would have thought of saying or doing right. before COVID, like, oh, I, you know, I've got to run to the bank. I, let me quickly put on my mask. Right. I, I never would have dreamed of going into a bank wearing a mask. I mean, uh, the last time I was in a bank was in, like, the 90s. Do you still go to the bank? Does anyone go inside of a bank anymore? I don't think so. No. No. Bob, our director, does occasionally. I go to the ATM, like, a couple times a year. Yeah. But, uh, but my example, though, is people are wearing masks and going into banks and grocery stores. And just a few months ago, that would have been considered very suspicious. And now every medical professional in the world is saying, wear the mask. Wear the mask. And it's part of the, you know, the ensemble, I think, because now they're all fashionable. They don't have to be, you know, just the blue 
solid, you know, you're kind of showing a little bit of your personality. Courtney you know? was wearing a leopard print mask yesterday. <laughs> I wish you all could have seen it. Next time, you got to bring it down I will. to the studio. And it's just to be clear, room. we do wear our masks in the around the building. So the moment we arrive at Channel 2, we put on our masks. Every common area in the building, hallways, bathrooms, break rooms, all of that, people are wearing their masks, the entire staff. So it's only right now during the show when we are six feet apart that we don't wear them. Absolutely, but everybody else is, uh, has them on and, and in the building and um, yeah, mine's in the makeup room. Um, but you know, the thing is too, I, I think another um, weird saying, or did you ever, th I mean, when would we ever say we were in quarantine? Yeah. That would have never come out of our mouths, right? Yeah. Crazy. If there's anything that you all have found that you've said or done that literally would not have made sense until right now, please let us know on our Houston Life Facebook page because, you know, our viewers usually provide the best content for our show. They do. I sometimes just laugh and scroll and read the comments. It just, it makes me laugh for sure. People have great ideas. And they always say truth is stranger than fiction, right? Right. Oh, we talked about Carl Reiner's death yesterday. So yes. he died at 98. What an incredible career he had. So many Emmys. I think he won seven Emmys just on the Dick Van Dyke show alone and he produced that show right and so many projects he, he wasn't just an actor on screen reading other people's lines he actually was very involved in the editorial process and he was saying one of the quotes that I saw over the last day watching this coverage of his death truth is stranger than fiction and people you know you you write about things that happen to you the things in life that yeah. you couldn't make up no I know and look at every comedian out there right I mean all of the Heather McMahon's of the world and all these other comedians that we know love and follow it all it's all material that they grew up with or have heard or what's going on in their family. Remember Coffee Talk from Saturday Night Live, Michael Myers? That's his, based off of his mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> we, I have a story I gotta tell you about Brandon too. It's good. But speaking of comedians, before we get to that, Michael Yo, did you see him last night on America's Love Got him. Talent? He shared a bit of his personal yeah. story about how supportive his wife was with his career. And as we mentioned on yesterday's show, he was performing just for the judges. No audience. No audience. Zero react. I mean, there could be zero reaction. At least in a in a filled auditorium, there's gonna be some noise, right? Something to you might get one laugh is better than complete silence from four people. Yeah, I know. And the judges were laughing, yeah. right? But how uncomfortable would it be to be in stand-up, that's your career, making people laugh, and you deliver a joke, and there's silence. I mean, that happens to me all the time. No. But I have very low expectations <laughs> of my jokes. Okay, so... But he made it on to the next round. He which did. Is, which He's is great. We are so excited for him. You know, we love Michael Yell. We Can't do. wait to have back in studio one day. So... <laughs> I'm just always learning new things, right? No matter how well you know someone. Is this the story? I'm always learning things about you and about Brandon, right? So they say truth is stranger than fiction. Uh -oh. Well, a couple weeks ago, he had this issue with his eye, right? There was some sort of eye issue. And so I needed to put eye drops in into his, his eye? eye because he is incapable of doing this himself. Okay, I see where this is going. Oh my God. <laughs> it was like, when I tell you these eyelids slam shut like a trap door, Nothing. nobody's getting inside like a bank vault. I, <laughs> the struggle, this took a very long time. It would have been easier to re-roof the house. Oh my word, and he doesn't wear contacts, right? He doesn't wear contact lenses. Apparently, in all the years we've been together, he's never put eye drops into his eye, but we needed to put these special eye drops in his eye so it could get better. I was over him, <laughs> he was on the bed <laughs> trying to hold his eye open. By the time it was all said and done, I was laughing so hard. I was crying <laughs> and my tears were <laughs> dripping <laughs> onto him. And I was like, bro, Open your eye. Open your eye. You just have to hold still. But it reminded me of some of the struggles that, you know, nieces, nephews, like yes. the little people in our lives who we try to, you know, whether it's getting a splinter out of their foot or their finger right. or putting eye drops in. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm still just, <laughs> just the image of him unable to open his eyes was so funny to me. I know. Well, it's just crazy. So AJ, so he uh, gets dry eye, too, and I'll have to put drops in his eyes. And it's like, hang on, hang on, hang, hang on. It's, he's got to be in the right he moment for it. For he's got to prepare for it. It. And when Con when Connor switched over uh, to contacts, I thought I told Orlando I said, "Oh no, this is never going to happen. No, never going to." I remember it took me like a week to put the contacts in my eyes. Oh, when me I was too. Younger. An hour a day. I mean, it was crazy pants. And then once you got him in, you forgot about well, I got to get him out. 
I know. Remember? And then it's like touching your eyeball. Yes, and it's such a weird sensation. And I guess he just didn't want to wear glasses anymore. Um, you know, we play sports too. So we. It, that all came by, the contact lensing uh, lenses came by because we went to go get him the sports glasses for sports, yeah. right? So they, the non-shatter. And he just did not want to wear glasses. And I think that first time that um, Dr. Tran sat him down and my eye doctor and, you know, he just boop, boop, put him right in. He didn't even, you know, <laughs> no problem. never, because he just thought like, if I don't do this now, I'm going, we have to get glasses. And I think it was just mind over matter for him that he just popped in those contacts. Good for him. At 10. Yeah, That's, that really is incredible because when I was 13 years old, I could not get my contact lenses in in yeah. the morning. It was I such remember a pain. I would cry because I didn't want to wear. It. I had these god awful um, glasses. I need to find some photos. They were pink, of course, Cute. with like the upside down arms on the side. So like the arm was a little lower. Oh, I remember those. Yeah. My mom had a pair mm. of reading glasses yeah. like that, and I had braces and like a full on do. Oh, it was a look. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I don't understand about the old school glasses, they were so, so big. So giant. It's like, did your forehead have to see? Did your cheek have to I see? I mean, why? why? It was like so a windshield. much bigger than the space of there your eye, a like windshield. a windshield. They're like the protective coverings I don't know. that our medical professionals are wearing now. And they were so heavy. Think about how heavy they were in the 1900s. I mean, just think how heavy these glasses were. A made from lead. <laughs> Probably. Like our cell phones. <laughs> How did Hang on, let me take a call. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Ooh, it's like a dumbbell. Well, uh, uh, well, and you know the mask now. I mean, finally, everyone's getting on board with a mask, right? Like, I mean, you know, it drives me crazy that people have made this into like a political issue, right? right. And if Wear people the continue not wearing masks and getting sicker, that's not good for the con economy, folks, right? Like, nothing is worse for the economy if you're not wearing a mask. So it's great to see that people are finally doing that. But the sunglasses, the eyeglasses, the mask, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> on the faces. But keep it up, because I agree, it is like a fashion statement, right? It is. I have several. Just depends on, you know, where I'm at, what I'm feeling, what kind of mask, how do I match? Yesterday was a lot of leopard. i got to plan that a little bit better. You put a lot of thought into it. I know. I'm still wearing my Alan Gonzalez chips and salsa and guac mask. Oh, I love that's my favorite. I just washed that one. Yeah, gets mm -hmm. a lot of comments at the grocery store. I know. Well, we're gonna have a lot of fun on today's Houston Life Wednesday, right? Almost to the holiday weekend. And coming up on today's show, if you've ever found yourself torn between burgers and hot dogs, the struggle is real, right? But we do have a solution for you. Cheeseburger dogs are the perfect hybrid dish for your next summer cookout, maybe the 4th of July. I know, you don't have to choose. Restaurant owner and chef Tim Love is going to share the recipe with us today, just in time for the 4th of July holiday. But first, he's in his kitchen right now, all set up. Welcome back to the show. There Great he, to see you. There he is on the big screen. Tim, how are you chef, doing? How are we doing, guys? Great. So this is, hold on, is this something that you invented? Like, can you patent this, the burger and the hot dog together? How is it done? I, I got to be honest with you, I, I wish I could patent it, but um, <laughs> it, it, it came out of necessity. I was on a vacation, um, gosh, about eight or ten years ago, and we were on an island uh, in Anguilla, and I had, we had a grill at our little hotel room, and, and we were going to make some burgers. So then we went to the store, which you can imagine it's not a very big store, <laughs> and all they had was hot dog buns. So I came back and I said, the heck with it. I'll just take the burger and turn it into the shape of a hot dog. Turns out uh, it's really delicious because it gets charred all the way around the outside of the hamburger meat. So you get this really juicy hamburger, but you get the char as if you have these really thin patties. So And then you get to decorate it all up. Like you can see right here, you can put anything you want on the on, on the burger dog, Look right? It becomes this really fun atmosphere. The, the kids love it, uh, but more importantly, I love it. I'm going to show you how to make one today uh, at, for Fourth of July. You know, why not go out and do something a little bit different? You know, we're all staying home. We all got the masks on. You know, exactly. So. Uh, I'm trying to mind to a fashion statement too, by the way. It's it's it looks great on you. I got the scarf, you know, I'm working it out right here. That's how I do it. Well, listen, Ready you're going to stay in your kitchen. We're going to check back in with you in about 15 minutes as the process starts, uh, and we're going to check back in. Yeah, learn how it's done. We'll I know. see a little bit more. Tim, hang out there. We'll check back in. After the break, we are chatting with gospel singer Nikita Fox about her emotional experience singing at George Floyd's funeral. That's coming up next.
Wow, that was Nikita Fox's powerful performance at George Floyd's funeral service last month. A moving moment for people watching around the world. Truly was. She's one of the greatest voices in gospel, and we're lucky enough to call her one of our own here in Houston. Nikita Fox, welcome to Houston Life. It's so great to see you. Hi, thank you for having me. You know, as we were just watching a clip from the George Floyd funeral, um, I can't help but have chills throughout my body every time I see or hear anything coming from that funeral. But tell me what that was like to perform a gospel song on that stage. It was absolutely amazing. Um, I had the opportunity to choose the song that I sang on that day. And just being the worshiper that I am, I just chose to reflect back to giving glory to God, even, you know, with the situation and the reason for us being there, it was still um, reason for us to give God glory just for his life and just what has happened um, since his death. So it was just an amazing feeling. It was, it was awesome. And being in that room, of course, people were truly watching around the world. I understand that uh, that a really pivotal moment for you was actually seeing that gold casket with George Floyd's body uh, being taken out of that worship hall. Yes, it was just knowing and hearing a little bit of his background and where he came from, you know, it's true. If, if God can use anything, he can use anything to get a message across and to bring us together because people from all over the world was viewing. They were even there at the service. So, you know, God can use anybody, no matter where you're from, no matter your color, your, your social status. Oh, that was just a moment that I was like, wow, you know, this guy who was actually not known is mm -hmm. now he's known all over the world. Everybody knows George Floyd's name. Mm -hmm. And, yes. you know, so many times, Nikita, we say that music is so powerful. It heals the mind. It heals the soul. It heals the body. And that is no different in the stage that you were on at the funeral. But you have been singing ever since you were a little girl. And I love this story <laughs> that um, you're, you used to sing your name to your parents. Tell me that story. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> People would ask me, what's your name? And my reply would be, my name's Nikita. My name is Nikita. And <laughs> I did it all the time. If anybody asked me what my name was, that was my little song. <laughs> In 2011, Nikita, you released an album called Let Us Worship. And I know you've shared the stage with folks like Kim Burrell, Yolanda Adams, one of my favorites, the late and great yeah. Natalie Cole. Oh, I love Natalie love Cole. <laughs> and I understand that, I mean, this has got to be a little bit bittersweet for you, being able to perform at George Floyd's funeral. But then suddenly, people from around the world know who you are. And this album of yours hit number 15 on iTunes. It did. I didn't even know. The crazy thing is, when I sat down from singing, I checked my phone because my children were here. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make sure that they hadn't texted me or tried to call me for anything. So I checked my phone. I had like 100 messages. And people were like, do you know what's happening right now? Like, you're trending. And then like, a few hours later, I got a call and it was like, um, your, your record has reached like 25 on iTunes. So then as the time kept progressing, somebody else would text them and was like, oh, it's now like 16 on iTunes. And I was like, what? I recorded this album in 2011. <laughs> so I just... <sighs> I was like, wow, this is this is crazy. It <laughs> is, but I, crazy. but I think in a time where we are today, not only during this pandemic, but the George Floyd funeral, I think there's a time and a place that people need this kind of message, this kind of music, this kind of mm -hmm. healing uh, to the soul. And you provided that for lots of people not only here in your backyard, we're going to just own you as a Houstonian. You've been here a long time. Um, but you provided a lot of healing around the world. And I think that speaks volumes not only for the voice that you carry, but also the message. 
Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, just a little side note, I sing with Kirk Carr as well. And it's amazing to me how music transcends. Um, we've gone all over the world and one place in particular, Japan, they don't even speak the language. And when you talk to them, they don't really even understand what we're saying, but mm -hmm. they know the songs. Yeah. They can sing the songs lyric for lyric. And they always tell us, oh my God, we got chills and we feel what you're singing. So, well, a translator is telling us what they're saying. So it's amazing. It's, it's just truly amazing. Well, Nikita, we're so happy for uh, your success. What an honor it was to sing at Mr. Floyd's funeral. We, we're not going to let you go just yet. We do have a clip of you okay. singing. Now it is time for all of us to hear Nikita perform a beautiful church hymn called The Lord Will Make a Way. Like a ship that's tossed and driven Batted by an angry sea when the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me Tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. Ah, when, 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 when the storms of life are raging and the fury falls. Oh, so beautiful. What I love about your sound, Nikita, it's gospel infused with jazz, but also that, that soothing message. And, and that's kind of your style. It is. It is. I'm a jazz enthusiast. So, and I love church. I love <laughs> Jesus. I love church. So what better way to convey the message than to infuse the two? And if some of our viewers wanna wanna hear more, you are the Fountain of Praise Director of Praise and Worship. How can people hear more of your lovely talents? Yes, I'm always at my church. Um, well, since the pandemic, we've kind of been switching out, um, but ma mainly I'm there. I'm there on Sunday mornings. And also um, I have a YouTube page. Uh, you can follow me, subscribe to that, Nikita Fox. And I'm uploading music there as well as if you haven't purchased my CD, Let Us Worship, it's on iTunes. That's the title, Let Us Worship, Nikita Fox. Um, I'm always posting music on my social uh, social media pages. I am Nikita Fox and Nikita Clegg Fox. Well, listen, you are a powerhouse, not only uh, an incredible gospel singer, a wife, a mama of two, and yes. you also have an apparel line and penning two books. So yes. I don't know. Are you, are you busy at all, girl? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, thanks for taking some time for us today, Nikita. Thank you also for sharing your talents with us as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And to our viewers, if you would like to connect with Nikita, you can visit our website and look for the Scene on Houston Life section. And we'll be right back.
welcome back, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I, my nieces, I know they're watching it at home right now. Yes. And you know, every time we FaceTime, they ask about things <laughs> that go wrong on the show. So, <laughs> so in case you heard the drum roll that just sort of came out of nowhere before the last commercial break. Um, That's one of them. <laughs> Uncle Derek, does oh. anything ever go wrong on the show? Well, Never. yes, yes, it does. <laughs> Sometimes our director plays drum roll sound effects <laughs> just because. And it was, okay, all right, that was funny. Okay, well, speaking of my nieces, yes. we had mentioned that they wanted to get involved in the art assignment, so this is from London. London is nine years old, and you can see... Love your life, Derek and Courtney. Don't so ever stop cute. laughing. Yay. Very nice, London. We oh, love it. Oh, London, thank you. Oh, are these um I don't know who those, those are. Those are us, right? That's you That's and us. me. I love you it. You and me. This is from Bella, who is eleven years she old. She did such a great job. That's me in studio one H. I know, and me in studio <gasps> B with a floating microphone and a glass of orange juice. Yes. Oh my word. I hope they are gonna send us this copy. Pretty good, right? Yes, we she need did it. it. It's actually a pretty large scale on cardboard. Oh, I love this is it. from Scarlett, who's seven years old. Scarlett, you did great, girl. Fantastic. She did it, I think, on some sort of like foamy, spongy material. Oh, I love all three. They they did a great job. I love it. That great was job. so sweet. Great job. I agree. And little Samantha, five year old Samantha, I think she has some submissions for tomorrow's show. <gasps> so we'll take a look tomorrow. I, oh my gosh, I love it. That's so sweet that they did it. Yeah, thanks, ladies. Bella London, Scarlett, Samantha. We love you. We do. Okay, well, let's start with our viewer comments now that we're getting on social media. Um, and Dawn writes in that we have a birthday parade to go to today. So we're talking about oh. basically like the fourth, how are you going to celebrate Fourth of July? Yeah, or the birthday or parades are. Huge. And the things that people wouldn't have said before now. During, right. I mean, four months ago, if someone had said, like, oh, I'm going to a birthday parade, I'd be yeah. like, uh, I'm sorry, what now? What does that mean? What? What's that? Uh, Jeannie writes that she's getting groceries during senior hours. Yes, Bravo, Jeannie. Bravo, Jeannie. Yes. And um, Irene writes in, does this mask go with this outfit? <laughs> That's another thing that we never thought we would say, right? Yes. So good, Irene. Thanks to everyone for submitting your comments. We do appreciate it. And up next, we're going to check back in with Chef Tim Love as he fires up the grill for his famous cheeseburger dogs. We'll have that next. It's here. Well, welcome back. Let's check back in with Chef Tim Love as he turns up the heat on those cheeseburger dogs. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Going good, going good, you know. I mean, I didn't get a drum roll when I came back. I know. You know I, <laughs> we, need, we need to work on that. <laughs> we'll try to get you one. Doing what I can over here remotely, guys, you know. It's, it's Throw you I a bone, do. huh? Yeah, I mean, a little something, a little symbol, you know. Uh, so now, Tim, you're going to actually walk us through step-by-step step how you create uh, these delicious Fourth of July treats. Correct. So uh, let, me, let me start with the meat. So I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll lean this up a little bit, but... So I've taken the, the the hamburger and just formed it into these long rectangles, right? Kind of like a long, like a hot dog. And then we're gonna season them up. So I like to use a little salt and pepper. And remember, the, just like seasoning a steak, you wanna make sure you season them well. I use salt and pepper, and then I use a little bit of my own steak rub, which has like smoked paprika, a little bit of guajillo chili powder, some garlic, uh, and a couple little herbs like that, okay? Now let me walk through the ingredients here before I start smoking the place up in a minute. So I've got, I've, I've put out some uh, shaved red onion, some pickled okra. You know, okra's great right now. Yes. I, mean, I don't know if you know this, but the okra is really just going nuts. In Houston, I guess ingredients go nuts all the time, but, uh, <laughs> and then some fresh jalapenos, tomatoes. I got regular dill pickles, some shredded cheese, some mayonnaise, some sliced cheese. And you can kind of do whatever you want, right? You think the ingredients, you think about it like stuff you like on a hot dog and kind of go crazy with it. And then it comes out even better uh, with these burger dogs. So then you can, you, obviously you can put these on the grill. If you put them on the grill, I suggest that you hit it with a little bit of uh, peanut oil or grapeseed oil before you put them on the grill. Or if you can use a flat grill like I am today in, in the middle of the kitchen, you put the oil on the flat grill. So two different things. It goes on a regular grill outside. You want to put the oil on the meat. If you're gonna do it on a, a, a griddle, you wanna put the oil on the griddle. Gotcha. And the reason for that is, uh, it's the way that the meat chars. So you want the char, that's the whole point of why we're doing this, is you get that nice char on the outside. So I'm gonna throw these on here like this. 
And Tim, let me ask you, if someone yeah. wants to maybe consider subbing in like a ground turkey or something else for the beef, does that still uh -huh. work or is this really a beef only scenario? I mean, I say this all the time. You can cut your lawn with scissors if you want to, you know what I'm saying? It works. <laughs> uh, well, and I do cut my but lawn with scissors. Most people like to use a lawnmower, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm with you, Tim. <laughs> I mean, you can do it. You but, can do you it, know. but it's not recommended. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's actually not true. You can do it with turkey, but, okay. you know, it wouldn't, be as, it wouldn't be as fun to talk about. Yeah, no, turkey's great. In fact, you can do it with chicken, any kind of ground meat. Ground pork, if you like, if you like pork, you can do it with pork. Hmm. But the key here is getting the char all the way around the outside of them, you know what I mean? And how long so, are we are we going to leave that on there? So it, these are pretty thick dogs, so it's going to be about a kilometer out, you know what I'm saying? And I like to get ground meat up to about 155 degrees. That's about medium, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, some people like it cooked more, but at least 155 degrees, okay? Now, while those are cooking, we're going to talk about the bun. So now... You can get any kind of buns you want. I like the nice, big, fresh brioche buns like I got right here. I'm gonna slice them wide open like this. All right. What are y'all doing for the fourth, by the way? Anything fun? You know, swimming and uh, barbecue in the backyard. That's oh, about it. Doing dishes, cleaning uh, out the fridge, you know, the make, usual. Making burger dogs. <laughs> yeah. Making That's burger cool. dogs. Well, and I think you it's great you're using. Out the fridge. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, all this extra time at home, Tim. <laughs> I know. It's the simple things. I like you that you're. Clean the fridge on the fourth, man. At least get a sparkler or something. <laughs> we'll, we'll do something. <laughs> uh, we'll poke your eye out with one of those. But I like that you're using the brioche bun because the, the size of the meat is yeah. so large that a regular hot dog bun bun might not do the job, right? That's right. And you can. Obviously, you can make the, the hot dog smaller, but I like the light uh, airiness of the bun, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Because you get a, a really thick kind of like a baguette or something like that, it's hard to bite into. You want to be able to, be able to take a, a nice bite and get through this. Now, if you cook this right, guys, you don't have to worry about it sticking. You want it to cook long enough to where it chars and then the meat releases from the grill. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, as I flip these over, I'm going to give you another tip. So I'm going to flip this one over, and you can kind of see it's got this beautiful char on it. If you're nice. working on a grill, and I don't know if you can see me when I do the spatula here. If you're working on a grill, especially with burgers, when you go with a burger like this, what happens is we all know we've done it. You try to scoop the burger, and the burger keeps jumping to the back of the grill. You can't get it, mm -hmm. or, or, or you scoop it, and half the burger is left on the grill. Yeah. The two purposes for that one. When you scoop like this, you automatically lift your wrist down like this. That's what goes up into the meat like that. So you want to drag your spatula from behind. When you do that, it'll drag against the grill, and it'll never stitch. Oh. That'll work for chicken, fish, all that stuff. Come from behind the grill like this. When you do that, the natural motion is for you to drag the spatula underneath the meat as opposed to... When you scoop, you're, you're digging it up. That's why you're tearing up the meat on the grill and things like that. Okay, oh, that's an that is a tip. great little tip. Mm -hmm. So, Tim, why don't we check back in with you in about 10 minutes uh, as you continue assembling like these it. hamburger, hot dog, combo, hybrid <laughs> treats. I look forward to it. We're about to, it's about to be a 4th of July feast, and then I'm going to clean out my refrigerator. Absolutely. <laughs> and and we're, we're going to make sure we get the drum roll ready for the next that's segment. That's what I'm oh, talking yeah. about. A little something oh, for yeah. the kids. You know what I mean? A little effort here. We've got to have the reveal, the drum roll. That's okay, right. we'll check back in with you in just a minute. And coming up right. next, guys, Lauren Kelly is going to chat with local KonMari consultant and business owner, Ashley Barber. She's going to share some helpful tips for when it comes to organizing, you know, that work from home space. That's next. While so many people continuing adjusting to working from home, finding a designated space without distractions, oh, that can be tricky. Oh, yeah, the kids, the puppy, the mailman, the whole bit, right? Well, business owner Ashley Barber is chatting with Lauren Kelly about how to find, utilize, and, of course, organize your home workspace. Well, if your house needs a little bit of joy sparked into it, and it maybe is on the unorganized side or the messy side, I've got the perfect guest on with me now to help us out with that. She's no stranger to the show. Ashley Barber is here. She is a owner and founder of her very own business, Simply Maven. Welcome to Houston Live. Hi, Lauren. Thank you so much for having me on. It's nice to connect with you through Zoom. <laughs> Absolutely. I know we saw you back in March, but I need for you to help me and so many other people out there who have been spending so much time at home. 
We're still trying to figure out how to utilize our space or just simply organize it. And you've come today with some great tips for us. Yeah, you know, whether you're working from home, like a lot of people are right, are doing right now, or you're, um, or you're just at home, or if you're a mom trying to run a home, or, uh, you know, um, or just anyone trying to run a household, it's always good to have some kind of space where you can do those kinds of things, where you can focus on work. We're all juggling a lot right now. You know, I've got several tips that I wanna share with you, but the number one is just creating those boundaries and finding that, that spot where you can kind of be in work mode and then where you can turn it off and not be in work mode. One quick question, since you have been working at home for so long, I'm fairly new to this. I don't have an office. I'm turning a space into a desk. What's, yeah. what's the advice there? If you can just find like a small cabinet or a shelf in a closet where you can kind of just tuck the work stuff away so that you're not looking at it during your off time is really, really helpful. Um, and so it may require getting some kind of like holder or a little kind of like kit and caboodle, but somehow where you don't just leave your work scattered out in the middle of the living space makes a really big difference. So again, it's creating those boundaries between like, I am in work mode, I am in home mode because we need we need that especially when our brains are trying to do a lot all at once um i think also having some kind of start and end to the work or that time frame is really important having some sort of kind of ritual to like set your mind really helps too like maybe it's pouring a cup of coffee maybe it's lighting a candle maybe you know and something that also sort of ends that work area so it's unpacking the things and then repacking the things and putting them away it's very similar to when kids go to school they need that protocol like the mm -hmm. things that happen every day mm -hmm. uh, same as an adult with the work day since we're not leaving our house you still need a bit of a schedule to follow. Yeah, I like, instead of having really strict schedules, I, I love using the word framework or even just kind of rhythm. You know, give yourself um, some designated days or some designated hours within the day where you know you're going to kind of be focused on this or that. Um, but also try to give, your, give yourself some designated work time and some designated home time and try to respect those boundaries as much as possible. So just to kind of regroup here, designate a space and put that stuff for work away at the end of the day even if it's just a shelf, come up with a little bit of a schedule to stand by each day. And number three, again. Number three, um, I am gonna say, just pick one thing that you need to get done. Try to pick one thing. I know we all have these long, long, long lists and we can get very, very ambitious and we kind of live in a society where like busyness and is associated with importantness, right? right. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, we wanna make sure that our busyness is actually productive, right? And that we're actually moving on the things that are really important. And so trying to choose what that top priority is that you can really concentrate on and focus on. I think my brain agrees with you, Ashley. So thank you very much. And all the people working from home really appreciate all the tips. Ashley Barber is a Con Marie consultant and founder of Simply Maven. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate all of your tips and thanks again for stopping by Houston Life. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. More info on Ashley's tips are at HoustonLife.tv. Those are great tips. One day I'm going to use them. Uh, <laughs> Ashley, my junk drawer is in like under the, the closet, under the stairs. Oh, y'all. No matter how often we clean out the junk it drawer, matter. it's still the junk drawer. Always. Why do we have so many straight paper clips? Where do they come from? Yeah. Batteries, whatever. All right, still ahead on Houston Life, Chef Tim Love puts the finishing touches on his cheeseburger dogs. We're going to take a look at the final product right after this. All right, we are nearing the finish line on those cheeseburger dogs with Chef Tim. All right, buddy, what is left to do in the kitchen there? All right, well, listen, we're all set here. I got one bun already toasted, so we're going to top it off. So you, you guys just tell me what you like. You like, you want mustard, mayonnaise, or ketchup? I'm a mustard. I'm a mustard person, mustard. too. I'll do mustard and ketchup. Okay. There we go. Mustard here is done. Yeah, little known fact, part. Tim. Courtney Zavala is not a fan of ketchup. It's, it's... I know. It's, it's probably a flaw. I've tried to talk her into it. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I can't stand ketchup. We might be, we might be best friends. What? Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah, ketchup works now. I love tomatoes. I don't like ketchup. <laughs> Me, too. Yeah, see? That's how we do it. So I know. Just, just, I'm, <laughs> All right, now check it out. Here we go. Mm. You know I'm gonna give you the one that's good right here. That's like this, right on top of the mustard. Now that's the fun part starts. All right. All right. Pickled okra. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. I yes. knew you're my girl right there. Yeah, mm. some of our favorite. Pickled okra is like this. 
about some jalapenos or poblano chili? Oh, I'm going to say uh, yes. Okay. I love some Why jalapenos. Not? Why yeah. not when you can? You know right. Saying? Go big or go home, Tim. That's right. Red onions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we put a little extra cheese on there, you know, because we're Americans. That's how we do it. <laughs> and then a couple of big pickles. Oh, yeah. Then, look at this. This is insanity. And you did white cheddar cheese slices on that on, on the grill, right. right? Check this out, man. Where's my, that's my drum roll. We got it. Your drum roll. That's your that's drum roll. Huh? <laughs> I hope there's oh, a... Oh, no. no. Wow. Yes. Go. go for it. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, yeah. and, an, and a studio applause. Uh -huh. Studio audience loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Love for the win. That is such a great idea. Hey, it be is. before we go, because we're tight on time, let's chat about the woodshed and oh, yeah. Love Shack. Because the last time we saw you, it was the beginning of COVID. And my goodness, what, what great timing this. to open a new a new spot. What you oh, got yeah. there? You know, I, I, listen, it was in the plan the whole time. I wanted to open up my restaurant, then I wanted the pandemic to happen. <laughs> right. I wanted to shut it all down. <laughs> then I want to open it back up, then raise it all the way up, and then shut it down again. It's been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, you wish for this in my business. Memorable, so, to say the least, but you have these great 4th of July party packs people can grab. Yeah, check it out. So you, you go to a Woodshed and give them a phone call, and uh, you can pick out uh, different meats, two pounds of each meat. we got some brisket, rabbit, rattlesnake sausage here, one of our signature dishes at Woodshed, our pecan smoked pork rib. And then you get to pick out your sides. You've got ranchero beans. We got potato salad, Mexican corn, by the way, one mm. of my favorites. Yes. Best oh, selling deal we have. So good. The woodshed. Yep, that's exactly right. And don't forget the luscious barbecue sauce. Listen, help keep a poor, broke chef with a really nice mask around his neck in business <laughs> and go order some barbecue. I'm Amen. Like, Amen. I mean, hallelujah. You don't even have to clean out the fridge. You just make it put it in the trash. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you do. Tim, we That's love we having do. you on the show. We can't wait to see you in person. And, uh, of course, don't forget the Love Shack over there at Levy Park right here That's in right. Houston. Have a great weekend, and hopefully we'll see you in person again soon. Oh, Come is that back, a margarita? That's, that's right. It's a margarita bag. This is the news and greatest and greatest thing. Thanks to Governor Abbott, we can have margaritas to go. We sell them by the sack. Yes, that's an adult juice box, if I do say so myself. I'll take a dozen sacks of those. <laughs> so those party <laughs> packs, you <laughs> get <laughs> you, you get the main course, you get the desserts, the drinks, the sides. Tim Love, Listen, we're going to love it. Listen, we got all, baby, at the woodshed. Come see us. Let's go. Woodshed love it. right there at Levy Park. Tim Love, it's great to see you. Thanks for being yeah, here. Good to see you guys. Happy okay. Fourth. We're going to have the full recipe and a link to connect with Chef Tim Love on our website. That's HoustonLife.tv. A bag of margaritas? Yes. We can add that box. to the list of things we never said until now. Until now. We'll be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, how about children's books that celebrate diversity? Entertain and educate with five titles to help you open up the conversation with your kids about inclusion and empathy. Blue Willow Bookshop in West Houston will share the list. And by the way, they are perfect for kids starting as young as age three. Very important conversations we should all be having. Absolutely. And 4th of July DIY, how to liven up your 4th of July celebration from home with some festive decor. We're going to share three budget-friendly projects projects to help your socially distanced party go off with a bang a bang yeah or without a bang with oh a bang? without a bang without I mean, but i think the bang is like fireworks right so it's with yeah mm, i don't know well can we get an ice drum roll please because today <laughs> on facebook we asked you to share what is something you said recently that wouldn't make sense until now like let's go to the woodshed and get a bag of margaritas yes take out alcohol <laughs> well some of our viewers <laughs> you've written in we've loved your comments we have some more of them right now steven writes my co-worker is a dog oh, oh ours too steven i know ours too. but that was before the pandemic love it uh linda wrote in i got my mixed drink to go mm. exactly <laughs> amen to that and corey writes in oh corey we love her close the bedroom door i'm in a virtual court for traffic tickets <laughs> I love it. Uh -oh. That's what happens, man. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> no corona for me. Thanks. 
Oh. Yeah. That's too bad. That's too bad. Debbie writes in, has anybody found a store with toilet paper? I know. Yeah. Things you never thought you would say. Never in our lifetimes, right? I know. And Kristen writes in, I got my temperature checked at work today. <laughs> That's so true. Let's hope it was on the forehead. Right? Oh. And Marcy writes, gotta go. My trainer is about to Zoom me. Oh, oh. gotta go. Okay. These are all very good. Very, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice. Leave it to him to bring up the temperature situation. What do you mean? Of course they're on the forehead. It's like a scanner. There are other, I mean, you could do it in, you know, under the armpit. Not very accurate. Or under the tongue. Mm hmm Where else? I don't know. You tell me. Anyway. We have one of those forehead scanners. We do too. Um, but you actually have to touch the forehead. I want the one that you oh, can Oh, I love like, it. Pew, I love the pew. I love yeah, it. I think they're sold Listen, out everywhere, though. Thanks for the drum roll today, Bob. We needed it. Yeah, it we was sure perfect did. timing. Drum rolls for everyone. <laughs> See you tomorrow.